good morning my dear students of class 12th welcome to today's session wherein as i have already told you in the prologue of the poetry that we are doing today the second poem in your book uh, flamingo by the name of an elementary school classroom in a slum now i had been telling you and i have already told you that this particular poetry you know gives you an insight of an elementary school which is situated in a slum area and already in our chapter the lost spring we have discovered in detail we know in detail that how is life and how is survival in a slum area the moment you come across the word slum so you know it is an extremely unhygienic filthy dirty space devoid of sewage drainage fresh water and any sort of amenity which could give you a feel of a healthy lifestyle or which could give you a feel of living in any sort of livable conditions that is what a slum is so before we get into the poetry it is very important that we you know picture in our minds what is a slum so i would just want you to take a second and recall the details that we had in the chapter lost spring dingy rains narrow lanes dirt okay sewage no sewage no drainage okay and apparently so much of smell that you cannot be there even for more than a minute and you do not have house you do not have proper constructions you just have uh, a hutments hutments and and you have uh, a state wherein animals and human beings are coexistent in a primeval state these are just the words that i have picked up from um, i am helping you to recall the chapter lost spring um, so you know just just take a, a recap to seema puri take a recap to firozabad and then you would come to know the dingy lanes and the horrible conditions um, of of being in a slum so from there to now coming to an elementary school classroom in a slum what the poem is about what the poet is trying to do i have already briefed you in that okay so now we need to straight away look into the poem and see what is happening here so this particular poetry has 1 2 3 and 4 four stanzas and in this session i will be covering the first two stanzas stanza number 1 and stanza number 2 the poem has lot of literary devices the poem has lot of deeper meaning so i am in no rush and i also want you to take your time and understand each line and each word in lot of detail so that the basic idea of the poetry is clear to you just as it is conveyed to us by the poet stephen spender okay so let us now see what does an elementary school in a slum look like so the first line begins far far from gusty waves these children's faces and there is a full stop here far far okay there is repetition here so i have already written repetition the first device over used over here is repetition because the word far has been used twice so far far from gusty waves gusty waves are like strong winds a very healthy environment an environment wherein you have fresh air you have fresh winds you have strong winds are these children's faces so basically what the poet is trying to tell us here is that you can find these children away from a very healthy environment where in the slums so where are the slums the slums are basically in places 
in areas which is far far from gusty waves that means that these slums are in an area which are devoid of a nice healthy clean environment that is all that the first line means okay this is just the location of the slum ki slum kahan hai where are these children's faces ye bacche kahan pe hain these children are in the slum and where is the slum the slum is far far from gusty waves like rootless weeds their hair torn round their pallor now in the second line the poet gives us you know uh, a description of their face and their hair and with the word like and the moment like comes you know it is simply he compares these children or he compares the hair of these children with rootless weed rootless weed kya hota hai beta rootless weeds are unwanted plants if you have a garden at home if if you have plants at home so you would know ki aaj jo hum paudha lagate hain uske sath kai baar jangli paudha bhi ug jata hai it is weed it is rootless weed rootless kyun se bol rahe hain kyunki jo weed hai wo unwanted hai aur us unwanted weed ko aap kya karte hain usko ukhad ke phek dete hain you take it off you uproot it so rootless weed refers to the fact that these slum children are being compared to rootless weeds okay or he says like rootless weeds their hair torn round their pallor so just like we have rootless weed the same way they have their hair and it is unkempt unkempt matlab inke baal combed nahi hai acche se bane hue nahi hai their hair torn round their pallor and pallor refers to pale and dull face now see it's very important children that we understand rootless weed a clear cut comparison is being made here you can say that their hair is like rootless weed okay the hair is torn out around their pallor no that's true the hair is torn around their pallor it is not unkempt but these children are being compared to rootless weeds just as weeds which are unwanted plants are not kept by the gardener in the garden or in the pots or in any sort of plantation way that we are doing similarly these children are unwanted by the society ऐसे ही नो बडी केयर्स अबाउट दीज स्लम चिल्ड्रन जैसे हम वीड्स को उखाड़ के फेंक देते हैं वीड्स की पौधों में कोई इम्पोर्टेंस नहीं होती ऐसे ही सोसाइटी में इन स्लम चिल्ड्रन की कोई इम्पोर्टेंस नहीं है सो द लाइक ओवर हियर इज मेकिंग अ कंपेरिजन कंपेरिजन ऑफ द स्लम चिल्ड्रन विद वीड्स प्लीज रिमेंबर इट एंड देन ही गिवस अस द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ देयर हेयर के जो इनका physical appearance say when you will look at them obviously these are slum children what do you expect them how do you expect them to look like do you think they would be wearing nice and very clean clothes they would have taken a shower they would be all all well groomed okay with their nails trimmed and hair combed no dirty children you know how children are i mean just close your eyes and for one second imagine the rag pickers of sima puri इमेजिन साहेब आलम फटे पुराने रैग्स कपड़े नो चप्पल्स नो शूज नथिंग एट ऑल डर्टी एंड द हेयर टोन अराउंड देयर पैलर पैलर इज देयर पेल एंड डल फेस सो आर द फर्स्ट टू लाइन क्लियर माई डियर चिल्ड्रन इन द फर्स्ट लाइन द पोएट गिवज यू द लोकेशन ऑफ द स्लम एरिया विच इज फार अवे फ्रॉम अ वेरी अ वेरी हेल्दी एनवायरमेंट a very nice and clean location and the second line tells us that the children are being compared with rootless weeds and the hair the hair of their children is unkempt it is not uh, it is not well groomed it is not combed and it is just you know torn around their pale and dull face also it is very important to understand here that we are talking about children in a slum 
and these children in a slum the moment you come across the word slum you talk of everything that is very very bad not just the living conditions but even the individuals who are surviving there so you talk about or we talk about children who are extremely malnourished who are crushed under poverty who have a variety of diseases and children who are not happy and healthy at all so the moment the word pallor comes here pallor refers to a pale dull face so the moment you see a slum child wo aapko koi bahut acha sundar healthy bachcha nahi milega that particular child is going to be a very dirty unhealthy maybe malnourished poverty stricken carrying some sort of disease that kind of a child so now in the following lines um the poet will now give us examples of certain children in this classroom ke is slum classroom mein kaise bacche baithe hue hain okay so i want you to just start putting 1 2 3 4 so the first example that we see here i am putting one here he says the tall girl with her weighed down head and there is a full stop here okay so there is a tall girl in this classroom and she has her weighed down head apparently she has her head down and there is some sort of weight on her head some sort of weight on her head what could that weight be children this weight could be the weight of anxiety it could be depression it could be the weight of all the problems that she is carrying on her shoulders it could be the weight of the fact that they do not have anything to eat it could be the weight that what am i going to do so that is the kind of weight that we are talking about over here so the doll girl as the writer says here is that this girl is apparently you know weighed down because of the burden of sad thoughts okay and some kind of inferiority complex it could be some kind of depression she is unkempt as i said her she is not looking very neat and clean she is hungry she is malnourished she is impoverished and she is deprived इतनी सारी चीजों का वेट है उसके सिर पे दैट इज वाई द पोएट सेज दैट शी हैज हर हेड वेट डाउन सो आई वुड वंस अगेन लाइक टू यू नो रिपीट ओवर हियर दैट शी इज शी हैज द बर्डन ऑफ सैडनेस शी हैज द बर्डन ऑफ एंगजाइटी शी हैज द बर्डन ऑफ इंफीरियोरिटी कॉम्प्लेक्स शी इज नॉट लाइक अदर चिल्ड्रन ऑफ अ गुड सोसाइटी शी इज अनकेम्प्ड हंग्री malnourished impoverished and deprived so that is the kind of weight that this girl is having on her head and that is why her head is weighed down this is the first example of a student in this classroom in a slum which the poet gives you now we come to the second example here i am putting two number 2 the paper seeming boy with rats eyes and here the poet talks about a boy in this classroom and there is a word paper seeming and i have written metaphor what is metaphor metaphor is when you compare two things without using like and as so there is a boy in this classroom ek to tall girl thi the second is a boy or how is this boy this boy is paper seeming he is being compared he is so thin as thin as a paper bilkul paper jitna patla hai aisa itna patla he is so thin he is so undernourished right and obviously he has not had enough to eat so that is what he is saying he says that you know he is um he is one of the boys sitting in the classroom who is as thin as paper and the next line says with rats eyes very important his eyes are like those of a rat 
okay how are his eyes like those of a rat who is always in search of food to so the second child in this classroom or the second student in this classroom is a very very thin paper seeming boy who has the eyes of a rat and just like the eyes of a rat are always searching for food his eyes also seem to be searching for food that is the second example now we come to example number 3 the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk no this is not the the, the third example this is of uh, the same boy who is sitting over here so see what he says here he says that you know um this boy he has some sort of physical disability the stunted stunted matlab not fully grown ya not fully developed unlucky heir of twisted bones dekho heir kya hota hai successor you are the successor of your parents property theek to ye jo bachcha hai his bones are not properly developed and the poet says he is an unlucky heir of twisted bones this boy has some kind of um genetic disease or some kind of disease of bones in which his bones are twisted that he has taken in hereditary from his father reciting a father's gnarled disease gnarled matlab knotted जब आपकी बोन्स की चारों तरफ नॉट्स हो जाए लम्प्स हो जाए नॉटेड डिजीज जस्ट लाइक ऑस्ट्रोमलेशिया फॉर एग्जाम्पल तो ये जो बच्चा है ये स्टंटेड अनलकी एयर है इस बच्चे को दिस चाइल्ड हैज नॉट गॉट फ्रॉम हिज फादर इन सक्सेशन थिंग्स लाइक प्रॉपर्टी things like money bhai humko hamare parents se uh, you know we inherit wealth we inherit property we inherit gold but no is bachche ko kya mila he is so unlucky tabhi the poet says this child is so unlucky kyunki jahan baki normal bachcho ko people of good houses and good families where children of those families you know they inherit property wealth gold money कार्स एंड अदर लग्जरीज बट इस बच्चे को क्या मिला है इसको मिला है अ डिजीज ऑफ ट्विस्टेड बोन्स फ्रॉम हिज फादर हेरिडिटरी और जेनेटिकली एंड ही इज रिसाइटिंग अ लेसन फ्रॉम हिज डेस्क सो द स्टंटेड अनलकी एयर आई एम ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू अगेन दैट द स्टंटेड अनलकी एयर ऑफ ट्विस्टेड बोन्स दिस चाइल्ड इज अनलकी बिकॉज ही हैज इनहेरिटेड फ्रॉम हिज फादर यू नो अ लेगेसी फ्रॉम हिज पेरेंट्स ऑफ ट्विस्टेड बोन्स एंड एंड वॉट इज दैट इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ पॉवर्टी एंड माल न्यूट्रिशन he is the unlucky heir so i hope this is clear then we come across another boy now at the back of the dim class now please um circle the word dim over here the word dim highlights the how should i say you know the 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 availability of light in the classroom how bright is the class when you go to a classroom it will be appropriately lit so that studying is comfortable but yahan pe classroom kaisa hai beta yahan pe jo slum ka elementary classroom hai it is very very dim dull 
तो पोइट सेज एट बैक ऑफ द डिम क्लास उसका ध्यान जल्दी से नहीं जाता है इस बच्चे पे वन अनोटेड स्वीट एंड यंग एट द बैक ऑफ द क्लास देर इज दिस स्मॉल बॉय ही इज वेरी स्वीट ही इज यंग एंड अनोटेड क्योंकि वो बिल्कुल डिम क्लास में पीछे बैठा हुआ है अंधेरे में तो यू विल नॉट गेट टू सी हिम वेरी क्विकली जल्दी से उस पर अटेंशन नहीं जाता है ही इज अनोटेड सो एट बैक ऑफ द डिम क्लास वन अनोटेड स्वीट एंड यंग देर इज अ बॉय and he's sitting at the back of the dim class of the dim dull dark classroom and when the poet catches attention of him when the poet looks at him he sees that his eyes live in a dream that boy is only physically present in the classroom not mentally present usko jab dekho to it is as if his eyes live in a dream he is he is daydreaming wo kuch soch raha hai and what is he dreaming of of squirrel's game in tree room other than this what is he dreaming of of squirrel's game in tree room this little boy is not happy in this classroom he is not enjoying of what is there in the classroom to wo kya imagine kar raha hai wo imagine kar raha hai of a squirrel's game उसने कहीं ऑब्जर्व करा होगा कहीं देखा होगा कि कैसे द स्क्रिल कीप्स यू नो रनिंग अराउंड जंपिंग अराउंड इन द ट्री रूम स्क्रिल वुड मेक इट्स यू नो इट्स नेस्ट इट्स 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 प्लेस फॉर इट्स किड्स एंड एवरीथिंग इन इन द होल्स ऑफ द बार्क ऑफ द ट्री तो ट्री रूम वो कभी अंदर चली जाती कभी बाहर आ जाती देन समेर इट विल गो अप इट विल कम डाउन देर विल बी लॉर्ड ऑफ एक्टिविटी तो क्योंकि इस बच्चे ने वो ही देखा है बिकॉज रिमेम्बर ही इज अस्लम किड ही इज अट ही इज नॉट अ नॉर्मल किड जिसको बहुत दुनिया का एक्सपोजर है नो no. उसने एक ही अच्छी चीज देखी है क्या स्क्वेरल्स गेम इन अ ट्री रूम वो उसी को देख के बहुत खुश है ही इज नॉट सो ब्लेस्ड एंड ही डज नॉट हैव द एडवांटेज ऑफ हैविंग ऑल द फेसिलिटीज लाइक यू चिल्ड्रन हैव और लाइक एनी अदर नॉर्मल चाइल्ड वुड हैव he he does not have carrom board he does not have cricket he does not have ludo he does not have other outdoor and indoor activities just like sahib e alam was so content to watch tennis you know um in the area where anis jung was staying to usi tarike se is bacche ne squirrels game hi dekha hai in the tree room other than this ये दिस क्या है दिस रेफर्स टू द क्लासरूम सो हिज आईज लिव इन अ ड्रीम ऑफ स्क्वेरल गेम इन ट्री रूम अदर देन दिस सो ही इज नॉट हैप्पी इन दिस क्लास रूम ही इज हैप्पी टू ड्रीम अबाउट द स्क्वेरल गेम इन ट्री रूम ओके माई डियर चिल्ड्रन once again i would like to revise this first stanza please pay attention so far far from gusty waves these children's faces you will find these children in slum area and this slum area is far far from strong winds from a healthy neat and clean environment in the second line the poet compares these children with rootless weeds weeds are unwanted plants and just like our unwanted plants to us so are these children to the society to the people nobody is bothered about them and we don't care about these slum children how is their physical appearance how do they look like the hair torn round their pallor their hair is unkempt baal bane hue nahi hai gande hain ye pallor is pale and dull face these children are poverty stricken they are undernourished they are malnourished they are hungry they have a lot of diseases apparently and then the poet takes you inside the classroom and he gives you the first example in the class of a student and this is a tall girl and she has her head down and apparently her head is down because because she is carrying a lot of burden on her and this is the burden of sad thoughts it could be inferiority complex it could be depression she is also unkempt okay and she is hungry malnourished impoverished and deprived 
that is first example then the second example is of a paper seeming boy a boy who is very very thin metaphor has been used he is so thin that he has been compared to a paper and he has rat's eyes again his eyes are compared with the eyes of rats because the boy is so thin he is again undernourished he is hungry and just like a rat keeps searching for food his eyes are also apparently thinking about food and this boy is the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones okay so stunted matlab not fully grown and developed agar aapki bones puri grow nahi hongi kyun kyunki agar koi bhi bone hai usme beech mein hi kahin lump aa jaye knot lag jaye to wo acche se grow nahi karega so this boy is stunted he is so unlucky kyun kyunki इसको इनहेरिटेंस में अपने फादर से प्रॉपर्टी मनी वेल्थ नहीं मिल रहा है इसको क्या मिला है इसको डिजीज मिली है अ जेनेटिक डिजीज अ डिजीज दैट ही हैज इनहेरिटेड फ्रॉम हिज फादर अ डिजीज ऑफ ट्विस्टेड बोन्स रिसाइटिंग अ फादर्स नार्ड डिजीज नार्ड मतलब नॉटेड जहां बोन्स में नॉट्स लग जाती हैं एंड ही इज रिसाइटिंग हिज लेसन फ्रॉम हिज डेस्क and at back of the dim class and the classroom is very dim very dull very dark aur wahan piche there is a boy sweet and young andhere mein baitha hua hai piche unnoted is close pe jaldi se dhyan nahi jata his eyes are living in a dream of squirrels game in tree room other than this so his eyes are living in a dream they are day dreaming he is only physically present in the classroom but mentally he is thinking about the squirrels game in tree room he is thinking about maybe a beautiful place which is green the sky is blue the sun is shining the birds are chirping aur wahi ek sundar se ped mein you know apparently there is a squirrel and it is playing so this my dear students was the first stanza I am in no rush. In case there is anything that you haven't been able to understand, please feel free to get to me immediately. This class is finished. Okay? Any word, any line, it can be explained to you over and over again without any problem. But our only motive is that we should be able to understand it. Okay? Let's go now to the. second stanza let's see on sour cream walls the poet now gives you the color of the walls and he has clearly told us ki jo walls ka color hai is classroom ki walls ka jo color hai wo kaisa hai jaise sour cream ka hota hai sour cream kaise hoti hai beta um, इट इज वेरी पेल डर्टी येलोइश मलाई पुरानी नहीं हो जाती गंदी जब खराब हो जाती है वो कैसा गंदा सा येलोइश पेल कलर आता है उसके ऊपर ऐसी ही ये वॉल्स हैं एक्सट्रीमली डर्टी एंड नॉट मेंटेन्ड सो अ वेरी डर्टी क्रीम और येलो सो वी कम टू नो कि ये जो क्लासरूम है इसकी जो वॉल्स हैं ये बहुत अच्छे से पेंटेड और मेंटेन्ड नहीं है द कलर ऑफ दीज वॉल्स इज लाइक दैट ऑफ सार क्रीम प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस दिस इज द कलर ऑफ द वॉल्स तो इन वॉल्स पे कुछ लोगों ने जो डोनेशन दिए हैं कुछ चीजें जो डोनेट करी थी जैसे स्कूल में कर देते हैं इन वॉल्स पे वो चीजें लगी हुई हैं ठीक है ऑन सार क्रीम वॉल्स कॉमा डोनेशन फुल स्टॉप यहां बात खत्म हो गई है ये क्या क्या डोनेट हुआ है तो सबसे पहले देखिए क्या है देर इज अ पोर्ट्रेट देर इज अ पिक्चर ऑफ शेक्सपियर पोर्ट्रेट है शेक्सपियर का लगा हुआ है एक वॉल पे नाउ यू नो वेरी वेल शेक्सपियर रेफर्स टू लिटरेचर शेक्सपियर मतलब लिटरेचर नथिंग एल्स शेक्सपियर इज ऑल अबाउट पोएट्री रोमांस ड्रामा यस सो दैट इज वन थिंग क्या क्या डोनेशन हुए हैं किसी ने डोनेट करा होगा भाई शेक्सपियर का पोर्ट्रेट वहां वॉल पे लगा दिया 
Shakespeare refers to literature. Then there is a picture of this beautiful Tyrolese Valley. Or Tyrolese Valley ka आप यहाँ देखेंगे आपको मीनिंग भी दिया हुआ है एंड इफ यू विल गूगल इट तो पता चलेगा टायरोल कितनी खूबसूरत जगह है पर्टेनिंग टू द टायरोल एंड ऑस्ट्रियन अल्पाइन प्रोविंस इट्स एन ऑस्ट्रियन अल्पाइन प्रोविंस वेरी वेरी ब्यूटीफुल तो टायरोलीज वैली की भी पिक्चर टंगी हुई है वहां द सेकेंड थिंग तो क्या क्या डोनेशन है पहला वहां एक शेक्सपियर का पोर्ट्रेट दिया हुआ है सेकंड यहाँ पे एक पिक्चर दी हुई है एक इमेज दी हुई है किसकी द टायरोलीज वैली नाउ टायरोलीज वैली इज ऑल अबाउट ब्यूटी एंड नेचर एंड फ्रेग्रेंस ठीक नाउ व्हाई डिड आई कम हियर फर्स्ट बिकॉज यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सो देर इज शेक्सपियर पोर्ट्रेट there is an image of tyrolese valley which is belled and flowery belled matlab music music of bells flowery flowers ye sab cheeze kahan hain tyrolese valley mein and in the second line apparently the poet says cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities in the second line the poet is giving example of cities kehta hai ye jo slums hain they are so far away from the life in the cities shaharon ki zindagi to bilkul alag hoti hai jaise if you remember lost spring mein line thi that seema puri was on the outskirts of delhi but yet miles away from it कहने को तो सीमा पूरी दिल्ली में ही है कैपिटल ऑफ द नेशन बट उसमें डेवलपमेंट के नाम पे कुछ नहीं है शहरों में कैसा होता है जब वहां सुबह होती है डॉन क्लाउडलेस देर आर नो वरीज नो प्रॉब्लम नो टेंशन क्लाउडलेस एट डॉन सो वेन द सन राइज इज देयर ओके सिविलाइज डोम राइडिंग ऑल सिटीज so when the sun rises in these uh, cities it is apparently in the shape of a dome or these cities are so developed they have no problems they have all the facilities all the amenities you name it and they have it to jo donations diye hue hain usme there is a portrait of shakespeare which represents literature but For these children, literature is so meaningless. उनका तो कोई इंटरेस्ट ही नहीं है लिटरेचर में वो लिटरेचर पढ़ के क्या करेंगे इट इज सो सो मीनिंगलेस टू देम देन अपेरेंटली देर इज यू नो देर इज रेफरेंस ऑफ दिस क्लाउडलेस एट डॉन सिविलाइज डूम राइडिंग ऑल सिटीज सो यू नो इट मीन्स दैट i am i am again trying to explain this line here that you know in the early morning the sky is clear there are no clouds and institutions of the civilized world shine in every city civilized dome riding all cities civilized dome riding all cities matlab jitni bhi aapki badi badi buildings hain you know they sh- they shine because of the sun that is rising dome refers to the construction so they shine in every city but these have no significance for the children studying in a slum but slum wale bachcho ke liye isse kya lena dena hai no significance music of bells and fragrance of flowers see here music of bells and fragrance of flowers ye sab kahan exist karta hai in the civilized world in tyrolese valley are not meant for these children ye to sab civilized shaharon ki khoobsurat jagahon ki baat hoti hai kya kya literature music fragrance big big buildings development inka slum classroom ya slum se kya lena dena hai kuch bhi lena dena nahi hai okay children so when the sun rises in the cities it is cloudless 
and all the institutions the civilized institutions the buildings they shine riding wall cities matlab jitni bhi buildings shaharon mein hoti hain civilized doom riding wall cities shaharon mein to badi badi buildings hoti hain na skyscrapers and then the poet mentions the third thing an open handed map ek map bhi wahan laga hua hai और ओपन हैंडेड मैप का मतलब यू नो द मैप इज वेरी जेनरस द मैप इज ऑफरिंग द चिल्ड्रन इट्स वर्ल्ड भाई मैप में तो यू कैन सी द होल वर्ल्ड सो देर इज एन ओपन हैंडेड मैप अवॉर्डिंग द वर्ल्ड इट्स वर्ल्ड अब इस लाइन को थोड़ा समझेंगे अवॉर्डिंग द वर्ल्ड इट्स वर्ल्ड का मतलब ये हुआ दैट दिस मैप इज अवॉर्डिंग द चिल्ड्रन इज गिविंग द चिल्ड्रन द होल वर्ल्ड एज they can accept you know ke you have the whole world as it is as you can see in the map and that is how the map is showing it to them avoiding the world its world ka matlab map jab in bachcho ke samne aaya to map ne in bachcho ko pura world offer kara ke dekho kya kya hai duniya mein okay see how all as it is imposed by all the uh, you know by uh, by the shape uh, of all the uh, of of everything that is highlighted here so very clearly it has been given here awarding the world its world that they have given um, the children the map and with the map the children have the freedom to see that how the world looks like बट द क्वेश्चन इज के वर्ल्ड कैसा भी लगे राइट नो मैटर हाउ द वर्ल्ड लुक्स लाइक वट डिफरेंस डज इट मीन मेक टू दीज चिल्ड्रेन बिकॉज दे आर नेवर गेटिंग आउट ऑफ दिस स्लम नेवर एवर एंड दैट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग उनके लिए तो स्लम ही उनका वर्ल्ड है ना and tabhi aage the poet says and yet for these children these windows not this map their world poet kehta hai yet bhale hi unko ye map mil gaya ho but in bachcho ke liye ye window hi inka world hai ye map nahi hai kaun si windows the windows of this classroom and where is this classroom the classroom is in a slum तो अगर क्लासरूम में विंडोज हैं तो विंडोज के बाहर क्या नजर आएगा बेटा स्लम नजर आएगा बाहर की सारी दुनिया अच्छी दुनिया नजर नहीं आएगी क्यों बिकॉज द स्लम इज फार फार फ्रॉम द गुड हेल्दी एनवायरमेंट अ स्लम इज ऑलवेज अवे फ्रॉम द मेन लैंड फ्रॉम द मेन एरियाज ऑफ द सिटी सो इवन दो द ओपन हैंडेड मैप द मैप इज वेरी जेनरस मैप तो भाई सब कुछ ऑफर कर रहा है बच्चों को देखो you know there are seas there are continents there's this this that but what do the children do about it unka world kya hai unka world to wohi hai jo us khidki se nazar aata hai aur is khidki ke bahar kya nazar aata hai khidki ke bahar nazar aata hai ye slum aur slum kaisa hai dark dim dull dingy filthy unhealthy unhygienic with all the negativity of the world okay and this and and then the poet says that not the map not this map their world so everything that they see outside the window is their world and outside the window is the slum so the slum happens to be their world और वहां पे इन बच्चों का फ्यूचर कैसा है वेर ऑल देयर फ्यूचर पेंटेड विद अ फॉग प्लीज सर्कल द वर्ड फॉग हियर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड जहां इन बच्चों का फ्यूचर कैसा पेंटेड हुआ है इट इज पेंटेड विद अ फॉग फॉग कैसा होता है बेटा फॉग क्या होता है कोहरा है ना कोहरे में हमको क्लियरली दिख पाता है कि क्या आगे क्या है नहीं फॉग मतलब अनसर्टनिटी जहां आपको पता ही नहीं है कि आगे क्या है आगे क्या होना है विच मीन्स दैट द फ्यूचर ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन इन द स्लम इज अनसर्टन नो बडी नोज वॉट विल हैपन विद द फ्यूचर ऑफ दीज चिल्ड्रन 
तो ये ओपन हैंडेड मैप देने से उनकी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व नहीं हो जाती है दिस ओपन हैंडेड मैप इज कंप्लीटली यूजलेस बिकॉज फॉर दीज चिल्ड्रेन देयर वर्ल्ड इज नॉट द मैप बट देयर वर्ल्ड इज वॉट दे कैन सी आउटसाइड द विंडो ऑफ दिस क्लास रूम और इस क्लास रूम के विंडो के बाहर एक ही चीज दिखती है वो है स्लम और स्लम का मतलब है अनसर्टनिटी जहां उनका सारा फ्यूचर किस चीज से पेंट हुआ हुआ है बहुत सुंदर खूबसूरत रंगों से पेंट नहीं हुआ हुआ है नॉट विथ पॉसिबिलिटीज एंड ऑप्शन एंड वराइटी नो but with only one thing and that is fog and fog stands for uncertainty when you are not sure of what lies ahead okay so the future is painted with a fog yahan full stop nahi hai comma hai matlab aage kuch aur hai okay aage aur kya hai a narrow street this is very easy to understand नैरो स्ट्रीट हम समझ सकते हैं स्लम में कैसी होती हैं और ये नैरो स्ट्रीट कैसी हैं सील्ड इन विद अ लेड स्काई ये नैरो स्ट्रीट जो है सील कर दी गई है टाइट कर दी गई है पैक कर दी गई है किससे कर दी गई है बेटा विद अ लेड स्काई ये देखो लेड लेड का कलर क्या है ब्लैक ग्रे सो नेगेटिव दैट मीन्स इन बच्चों का जो आसमान है इनका बच्चों का जो स्काई है द स्काई ओवर देयर हेड्स इट इज नॉट क्लियर एंड ब्लू एंड ब्राइट एंड शाइनी प्लीज सर्कल द वर्ड लेड ओवर हियर एक वर्ड यूज हुआ था यहाँ डिम और एक वर्ड यहाँ यूज हुआ है लेड तो एक तो नैरो स्ट्रीट्स है और उनको बिल्कुल टाइट पैक कर दिया है सील कर दिया है सील करना तो पैक करना होता है ना बिल्कुल विद अ लेड स्काई कुछ नहीं इन बच्चों के पास नो ऑप्शन नो स्कोप नो अपॉर्चुनिटीज हाउ इज द स्काई लेड बॉर्न इन अस्लम डाई इन अस्लम और स्लम कहा है फार फार फ्रॉम रिवर्स हर खूबसूरत चीज से दूर है स्लम हर सुंदर चीज से दूर है स्लम फिर से रिपीट हुआ है देखो फार फार यहां पे था फार फार फ्रॉम गस्टी वेव एक अच्छा एनवायरमेंट अच्छी हवा और यहां पे कहा है इसलम फार फार फ्रॉम रिवर्स केप्स केप्स क्या होता है बेटा द लैंड फ्रॉम द कोस्ट जो समुद्र में जा रहा होता है दैट इज द लैंड एंड स्टार्स ऑफ वर्ड्स सो दीज चिल्ड्रेन आर लिविंग इन अस्लम दैट इज अवे फ्रॉम अ हेल्थी एनवायरमेंट दैट इज अवे फ्रॉम लिटरेचर that is away from education that is away from anything that is so good and anything that is required for the development of any child aur aisa kyun hai aisa sirf isliye hai kyunki hum ek normal elementary school classroom ki baat nahi kar rahe hain we are referring to a school an elementary school classroom in a slum and i don't think so that i have to again enable you to recall what does a slum look like jhuggi jhopdi ka area kaisa hota hai shaharon se kitni dur hota hai wahan kitna development hota bhi hai ya nahi hota hai jin jagahon pe na sewage hai na drainage hai na fresh water hai kuch nahi hai wahan you cannot even stand there for a minute hum wahan jaane ki soch bhi nahi sakte hain That is why the poet says that वहां sky कैसा है It is a narrow street sealed with a lead sky. There is no hope at all. And this place, the slum, is far, far from all the goodness of nature, from rivers, from capes, and from stars or words, from any sort of proper education for the children. So, dear students, in today's class. i'm just doing these two stanzas here so i want you to very carefully revise them please highlight these important words i have i have uh, circled them but i want to highlight them here for you they will help you imagine ki kya condition hai slum ki okay yeah the colors or the way the poet gives us the imagery na that we need to understand as students of literature ki what do these words mean dim fog lead 
तो एक तरफ तो ऐसा वर्ल्ड है और एक तरफ कैसा है बेल्ड फ्लारी टायरोलीज वैली ब्यूटिफुल लिटरेचर कितना कंट्रास्ट है क्योंकि एक तो है स्लम और एक है मेन स्ट्रीम सोसाइटी दैट्स द डिफरेंस सो विद दिस आई विल वाइंड अप टू डेज सेशन प्लीज रिवाइज इट try to find out the meaning of the difficult words and in case if there is any problem at all please get back to me in the next class we will cover up the next two stanzas and we will be finishing this poem take care children